in the study. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's just get started. So the first thing that we want you guys to do is we want you to download the phone app. The phone app is extremely important to you because it's going to give you so many tools in this process. One of the things that you guys need to do, the first place to start, is text the word MOM to 474747. On the screen next to me, you guys will see all of the different pieces of the phone app, and you can see that there's many things that you guys can do. You can listen to our podcast. You can subscribe to our podcast. You can apply for your loan. You can contact us. And you can watch many videos about, you know, what what are these different loans? What is an FHA? What is a VA? All of those very important things. So make sure you guys download that phone app and get yourselves ready. So once again, text the word MOM to 474747. Once you do that, you're going to get a link, and it's going to say download the app now. Go ahead and click on that link. What you're going to do is save it to your phone. You don't have to worry. It's not another app that's going to take a bunch of memory from you. It is literally just going to save a browser to your home screen. So make sure that you guys do that and that you have it. You'll also see on this this, uh, page that you can contact us. You can see that you can run payments. There's a payment calculator. It is the most advanced piece of equipment that you guys can have for homeownership. So make sure that you do that now. How do you contact us? This is an extremely important piece as well. You may not be ready today to ask those questions. You may feel a little bit embarrassed. You may not be ready to pick up that phone. But you know what? Eventually, you will be. So make sure that you know how to contact us. You guys can use the phone app, of course. And at the at the very first screen, like you saw, there's a contact us button. You can call me, Larry, Heidi, anybody that you want to get a hold of. All you have to do is call now. You can also send us an email, and you can choose who you'd like to send that email to. You can also, obviously, go to Facebook or YouTube. You can also Yelp us. Check out our reviews. I can tell you that they're great, and you will feel very confident in using Mortgage Mom Radio. All right, so the very first place that we're going to start is with buzzwords. What are buzzwords? Well, in mortgage, everybody talks in acronyms. And I'm sure if you've even put your toe, just dipped your toe into the home buying process, you have heard things that you have no idea what they're talking about. I've already thrown out at you things like FHA and VA, USDA conventional, jumbo. These are all words that are so important to you. What I want to make sure that you guys do is subscribe to our YouTube channel because you can take this video and you can pause it. When I get to the next screen that's coming up right now, you're going to see real estate buzzwords. You're going to see all kinds of things on there about an appraisal. What is the difference between an appraisal and a home inspection? Well, you know what? They're different. And guess what? You pay for both. So these are things that are very, very important that you guys need to be aware of and that you need to understand. You have a CD. What is a CD? It's not that disc that you put in the player to listen to a song. It's actually a closing disclosure. And you have to sign that three days before you can actually fund your loan. If you're going to refinance your house, you need to sign it seven days before you can fund your loan. So you need to understand what your CD is and why your loan officer might ask you to sign that CD and why it's so important that it's time stamped, dated, and ready. There's going to be also things like escrow. Escrow can mean two different things. Escrow can be part of your impound account. Again, impounds, that's another word. That can be something that's part of your monthly payment. It can also be that third-party neutral person that is taking instructions from the buyer, the seller, the lender, and the real estate agents during a transaction. So make sure, again, that you guys subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can watch this video, you can pause it, and you can read all of these definitions. There are two pages of definitions, and there's a lot of words that you need to know. If there's a word that you don't know or that you hear and it's not on this list, what do you do? You use your phone app and you contact us. Send me an email and ask me, Debbie, what does this mean? And I'm going to help you get there. All right, so some of the things with homeownership are benefits, and we want to make sure that we understand why we want to be a homeowner. There are so many different kinds of benefits, and you'll see those listed on your screen right now. There's, you can build wealth. How are you building wealth? Every single time that you make a monthly payment, part of that monthly payment is going to your principal balance on your loan. You have to look at that. It's essentially a savings account, and that is going towards paying down the balance on the home. That home is going to continue to appreciate. 
As that at home appreciates, you're gaining wealth in the value that it's appreciated, and you're gaining wealth in the amount that you've paid that balance down. That is not something that you get as a renter. You're also getting tax savings. Your property taxes and your mortgage interest is tax deductible. What you pay today at the end of the year when you file those tax returns or what you get back in a refund is only going to get better. So that's another benefit of home ownership. Security. Have you been a renter? Do you own, do you have kids? Do you own kids, right? We all own kids. Um, but do you have kids and do they go to school? Do you want your landlord to issue you a 30 days notice to vacate? You don't. When you own your home, as long as you make your payments and you pay your property taxes, nobody can tell you that you have to move. You have got that security of home ownership. You have your pride of home ownership. So if you live in your home and you want to upgrade your cabinets in your kitchen, put in some brand new floors, you want to do a little bit of landscaping outside, every dollar that you invest into that property is also improving that property. It is bringing you more wealth and more value. If you're a renter, you're not going to do those things. Do you hate that carpet that that landlord put in because it's cheap? Well, you know what? So do I. I love tile floors. So that's pride of homeownership. And it's not only pride of homeownership. It makes you feel good about where you live, but it's also adding value to your home. And last but not least, you're going to build some great credit. There's so many things that you can do when you are a homeowner and when you have a mortgage on your credit report. It's not only going to help improve your credit score, but it's going to open you up to be able to obtain financing that maybe you can't do today. You know, do you want to buy an RV? I can tell you that those RV lenders, they're looking for a mortgage. They want to see that you have that history of making those larger payments. So that's very, very important. You are going to build your credit, and it is going to be something that you can't do as a, as a tenant. And when you rent, your monthly payments are not being, to, you know, reported to your credit bureau. They're just not. So these are a lot of the benefits. Um, you'll see that there's actually on the screen a uh, 1098 form, and that is just to give you an example of what that looks like. You get that at the end of the year from your lender, and they're going to tell you you've paid this much in interest and this much in property taxes, and guess what? That's all a write-off. So just some of the benefits of homeownership and why you want to be a homeowner and own your property. Along with homeownership, though, comes responsibility. And there's a lot of responsibility when there comes, you know, a home. And there's things that you do need to be aware of, and there are downsides. One of those things is that they do report your payment history to your credit report. If you don't pay your landlord today and they don't report to your credit bureau, that might not show up. You may get that benefit that you missed a payment and it's not hurting you. But you don't own a home. The other thing is property taxes. You do have to make sure you pay those property taxes. If you don't pay them, you can lose your home. So you wanna make sure that you get those paid. One of the easiest ways to do that is with an escrow or impound account. Go back in the video and read all my buzzwords and you'll know that they're always gonna be paid because they're part of every monthly payment that you make. The other thing is insurance. You need to make sure that you stay insured. Do not let that insurance drop. If something happens, your home burns down, your property floods, you need to make sure that you've got that insurance protecting you. So that's one of those uh, homeownership responsibilities. I like to call it adulting, <laughs> a very important piece. Um, the other thing is repairs and maintenance. Right now, maybe the dishwasher breaks, maybe the refrigerator breaks down. Now you're responsible for those things. And later on in the course and down the road in a couple of weeks from now, you're going to learn all about home warranty plans. So it's something that you can protect yourself from, but you need to be prepared for. Make sure that you're putting a little bit of money away when the roof goes bad or pipe breaks, something happens, so that you can make sure that your responsibility of taking care of those things is maintained. Last but not least, if you buy a home that's got a homeowners association, you're going to have what they call HOA dues. Again, go back to my buzzwords. What is HOA? It is a homeowners association. Homeowners associations can be fantastic because they are going to make sure that your property keeps its value. Your neighborhood stays in great shape, but they're also an additional responsibility and an additional expense if you get into one of those neighborhoods. If you don't pay your HOA dues, they can foreclose on you. So make sure, again, one of the responsibilities of homeownership is to make sure that you're taking care of all of the pieces that need to be taken care of. So now we're on to the good stuff. 
I want to show you guys a little bit of something that you can actually do all on your own. And what I have up on my screen right now is just a very quick calculator that I did. You can do it from Zillow, and you can actually put in the city that you, that you want to move to. You can Google search what is the average price in my city. You can put in how much that you pay in rent. And this is going to give you the benefit of renting versus owning. So just a quick little tool that I felt is very important that you can research and do on your own. Go to Zillow and check it out. It's a great tool, and it will definitely show you how you're saving, even if your monthly payment is going to be more as a homeowner. All right, so rent versus buy. Once again, another slide. I did this one very quickly for you. And again, if you guys go back to YouTube and you subscribe to the channel, you can find this video and you can pause and you can read. Using that average sales price of six twenty dollars for a home in San Pedro, um, I went ahead and I put in a rental amount of $3,500, a small down payment of 3.5%. Um, and, you know, to show you what the benefits are to you. In this slide, you'll see that over time, you're going to build equity, you're going to pay your balance down, and at the end of the day, you're going to walk away with a whole lot more money than you would by just paying that average rent for a normal single-family home of $3,500. So if you want to see this special to you, all you've got to do is call me, send me an email, let me know where you're looking, what that sales price is, how much that you pay for rent, and I will put this together for you in specific. All right, so how do you get started? You're getting ready to get out there and you wanna go ahead and you wanna buy a home. We haven't even started to talk about loan programs, down payment assistance, none of that. All of that happens after the first step. And the first step is to contact us. We wanna get you pre-qualified. We wanna we want get you pre-approved. What is the difference between the two? Because they are very different. Pre-qualified means that your loan officer that you talk to took your paperwork, looked at your credit, and said, you know what, you look great. Go start shopping for a home. Pre-approved means that you've actually been underwritten by an underwriter and that you know that you are ready to take that step. You've got your loan secured and you are ready to go. Through the pre-approval process, we are gonna look at your credit, at your down payment available, at your monthly income, and we are going to help you determine what is the best loan program for you. Again, all those acronyms, is FHA right? Is conventional right? Is USDA right? What loan program works for you? Maybe you're self-employed and you need bank statements. That's okay. But you've got to start somewhere. How do you get started? Well, you go to our website. You go to mortgagemomradio.com and you click on the, the apply button. We are going to take your information from there. We're gonna give you a call. We're gonna talk about you. We're gonna talk about your specifics. And then we are going to pull your credit. We're gonna look at your income. And then we're gonna to start to talk about what are your options? What options do you have available? Can you qualify for down payment assistance? Do you need to put some money down? Do we, do, do we need to do a little bit of credit repair? Maybe we need that bank statement program. Whatever it is that you need, we can tell you once we get that pre-approval started. So the first step, go to mortgagemomradio.com, click on apply and fill it out. It's 15 minutes at the very most, and then all you've gotta do is pull your documents together. We're gonna to give you that list based on whether you're a salaried borrower, you get overtime, or if you're self-employed, we're gonna tell you what you need to send us, and we're gonna take a look and we're going to create a plan that is specific to you. All right. So this is where we start to get into loan programs, and this is where I'm going to actually stop today. Next week, we're going to actually start talking about this slide. We're going to talk about Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, Jumbo Loans, Bank Statements, FHA, USDA. These are all those acronyms about every single different loan program, and we're going to start to get into those one at a time. So I hope that at this point in time, you guys have all subscribed to our YouTube channel. You guys know that we're going to be on again next week. We're going to start bringing to you the different loan programs. What are they? What can you do with each one of them? We're going to get very specific and deep on each single one. And um, in the meantime, any questions that you guys thought about today, we're going to see all those questions in the comments. And Barry's going to start reading those to me. And I'm going to start answering all of those questions for you. I hope that you guys really enjoyed this piece. Don't go anywhere because we're going to shut it down and we're going to come right back live and start answering all of those questions. And hey, you know what else that we're going to do? We're going to pick the Morgan Wallen winner. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. 
else. Make sure you're on our page and get ready for our next second live video. See you, see you in a minute. Mom needs a minute. All right, so we are live now, and um, you guys, we, we had a little bit of technical difficulty this morning. We were trying to get it, uh, the uh, workshop to go live, but it didn't. So we did go ahead and upload uh, the video for you that we actually did live to YouTube. So we, uh, we got one thing down, and with everything, just like I call this Workshop 101, with everything, you're always learning all along the way. So um, we did it live on YouTube and then uh, recorded it and brought it to you guys. So if you missed it, then go ahead and go back to our feed or subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you guys can can watch it again but um, we are now going to start answering all of the questions that we've had coming in over the last few weeks and um, then we're gonna actually pick our favorite uh, question and that person if you guys are live with us uh, will win the Morgan Wallen tickets so um, Barry yes, I'm here. I know so I why don't you, your email. Do you want your email? all right so give me the emails yeah 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 and then uh, get on your microphone so you can start reading some of those others that came in through text if you guys would like to ask questions Questions right now please go ahead and put them in the feed you can just type in your questions and Barry's watching so I'm watching I see everything yeah so he'll read those to me and then um, you guys are also always welcome welcome to text the word mom to four seven four seven four seven if you'd like to get an answer that way so please feel free to do that um, but our first question actually that I got through email uh, came from Richard Cortez and he says house is paid off wife is a school lunch lady and I'm working as a self-employed Lyft driver our credit is challenged. We have children in private school. This is our biggest expense. We struggle to make ends meet. My wife thinks we should generate a second income by building a small casita behind our house. What do you advise? So this is actually a great question, and um, I actually responded to Richard. He sent this to me yesterday, um, getting prepared for, you know, I'm sure hoping to maybe win those Morgan Wallen tickets. Um, but I did respond to him, and I said, you know, it's a little bit difficult for me to answer this question because I don't know what his monthly debts are. Um, he said he was a little bit credit challenged. I don't know what the credit looks like. So sometimes in this situation, it's going to be a lot better for me to have some one-on-one, -on -one, actually fill out the application on the website, hit the apply now button and put your information in give me permission to pull credit I need to understand more about Richard so for example um, if he's got a lot of expenses per month even though the home is paid off maybe we could get his cash flow a little bit better by doing a cash out refinance pay off a bunch of debt get the cash flow a little bit better by paying off the debt we're going to increase the credit score and we're gonna fix his credit so you know there's a lot of things that we might be able to do for him with a refinance but if he doesn't have a lot of debt then maybe we need to look at other things. I love his wife's idea about building the casita. Um, that's kind of like what we talked about on the radio show yesterday, and Barry was asking questions about ADUs. Um, ADUs I love are, ADUs, by yeah, the way. Those are cool looking. They're it's fantastic. like garage houses. And <laughs> well, an ADU is anything that's just um, – De de like detached from your single family home. So, um, you know, the ADU would be a great idea, though, depending on how much it would cost to actually build it and, you know, permit it and do everything that you need to do. And then what you could actually bring in in monthly income. So it's definitely an opportunity and an option for Richard. But, Richard, thank you so much for the uh, questions. And I would really suggest that you reach out. Let's talk one on one and let's see if we can't figure out a way to get you in a little bit better scenario. Um, so our next question actually came from uh, Montserrat, I think is how she says it. And if I pronounce that wrong, I'm so sorry. Um, but she's from Orange, California. And she says, I'm in a nurse making 60000 a year. I have 13500 in credit card debt. I pay 2000 a month in rent. My credit score is 600 and have no money saved for down payment. Can I still qualify to buy a house? How much do I need? So uh, this is another one, again, where, you know, it's difficult to answer these questions when I don't know a whole lot about you. The, um, you know, the monthly debt that she might have on her credit report uh, could be totally different than somebody else. I can see that she's got 60000 a year in income. I know that she's a nurse. That's fantastic. But her credit card debt, you know, she might have a 0% interest credit card, and that 13500 is peanuts per month in comparison to somebody that maybe has that same balance at 20% on their credit card. So again, I really need to know more about her. And that is why in our workshop video, we talked about needing to do take the first step. The first step is to apply for that loan. Get the consultation with me. Let me help you. So that is really, um, for her, There, we've definitely got down payment assistance. She has a 600 credit score. She can definitely get into a loan. 
down payment assistance does require at least a 640 credit score. So maybe this is something that we want to work with her and uh, do a little bit of credit repair and getting her ready and prepared for that purchase maybe in just a couple of months down the road. So, you know, there's things that we can do to look at your credit, try to build it, help you repair it. We might even be able to get it done a little bit quicker um, than, you know, possibly just waiting out the time that it takes for things to fall off. So again, um, go to the website, click the apply button, fill out the application, and let's get a one-on-one -on -one con consultation going. Or, you know, you can text. Uh, you know, here's the voice from behind. You can't <laughs> yeah. see me, but you can hear me. Ooh. <laughs> You can always text the mom, text the word mom to 474747 uh, if you have a question or a comment or anything home related. Oh, absolutely. And you guys can always call me. Uh, my phones are always open. It's 844 935 3634. If I don't answer, please leave a message with my call service. They text me. And if I get a text message, I typically call back within about an hour. So please leave a message and I will call you back if I miss you. Um, so here's another question. This was a good one. It says, looking to buy out of state for retirement. My home mortgage is through Connecca. Would it be better to work with them for options? So uh, we do actually lend out of state, and we are in quite a few states. I work for JMJ Financial. They are licensed. I have quite a few licenses myself. So it is not necessary to work with the bank that you're currently using. Uh, this was from Amber, and thank you very much, Amber, for your email. Um, but we can absolutely help you. So all I need to know is what state that you're looking to buy in, where you're looking for that financing, and then I can definitely help you. Um, so let's see. I've got one more email, and then you're going to start reading our text messages right Barry yes now how do they email you by the way you don't re really send that out yeah can so you do it on the app they can they can email me right from the phone app if you haven't downloaded it like I said in that video make sure that you do that truly is your arsenal your tool belt uh, for buying a home and you can actually email me directly through uh, the phone app you guys can go to my website of course go to mortgagemomradio.com and you can click on contact us send me a message and my email is super simple it's Debbie at mortgagemomradio.com so not not too hard to remember I'm sure that you guys can do that uh, so here's my next question um, this came from Monica and it says I work security um, I got my uh, security guard card at, on uh, in February two years ago started working there and um, she's been there for about two years she makes about 25000 a year. The first year, she made 38000 with the same company this most recent year. And uh, she's been working on rebuilding her credit. So See, I, even if you don't know what you're talking about, the mom can figure it out. I'm figuring it out. It, this, this one, it wasn't too smooth, so I can't completely read it, but I'm figuring out what she's, what she's saying. So um, she's, she's been working on rebuilding her credit. She's got about 3000 in loans that she can pay off at any time. Um, and she, it looks like she'd like to know if she can buy a home. So yes, you can. Um, obviously, you know, the income that you earn is going to, uh, put us in a position of how much that you can qualify for, how much can you buy? Everything is about qualifying and make sure that you can afford that mortgage. So if she's making about 38,000 a year, we can definitely get her into a property. It's going to be on definitely on the lower end. So maybe in this situation, I would, might suggest that maybe she gets a cosigner, you know, maybe a cosigner could help her to, to uh, purchase just a little bit more in property possibly. Um, maybe she lives with somebody and maybe her and a roommate want to buy something together. Uh, so lots of options for Monica, but she just needs again to call and let me talk to her, you know, more one-on-one -on -one and, and um, create a plan for her, what, what's going to work for her. So uh, do you want to get into some of those text messages that came in, Bear? Yeah, you know, so okay. we've been collecting, good job on the, on the, uh, the actual snail mail tool yeah. too. That's no, hey, that was email. That's okay. It's not snail mail. It actually still happens. It does. We have an address and everything too. You can, <laughs> yeah. if you want to write a letter. Correct. Um, so I've collaborated a few of these text messages. All right, here's let's do this. Some of our best ones. Okay. Here's one that says, uh, "We are moving to Nashville." Do okay. you broker loans in other states? We sure do. So uh, JMJ Financial, who I work for, uh, was uh, licensed in. Tennessee previously and they actually uh, didn't do a whole lot of business there so they did let the license go but they are working on getting that back because I've actually had which is kind of crazy over the last two weeks I've had about seven people inquire uh, about Tennessee so we are working on that licensing and we will have that available within the next three to six months at the very longest and we will be able to lend in Tennessee as well so seems like a hot market it seems like a lot of people are moving to Nashville and why do you think that is 
you know, I, I don't know. I haven't done that research, yeah. but it does seem like there are a lot of people migrating there. Vacation. So. I mean, uh, retirement, maybe. Re- well, retirement, uh-huh. for sure. And that is it, definitely a lot of people leaving California, and they're going to other states. And for whatever reason, uh, Tennessee seems to be a state that a lot of people are migrating to. So we're working on that licensing, and we will be able to help. If you want to buy something before we are licensed in that state, I can definitely get you referred off to a bank that is you know, there and a good loan officer that can help you in Tennessee. Okay, we'd like to say hi to somebody live in chat. Jody is, okay. in, is live there. She's All right. watching. So hi, Jody. Hi, Jody. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. Appreciate it. In on a Sunday. Yeah. In between grocery store shopping. That's right. She's probably walking through the grocery store right now, and she's got me up streaming. I, I think love it. that's only you that does that. <laughs> I don't I've think so. I've never seen that before. <laughs> oh, I don't think so. Okay, here's another text All from right. somebody in the 310. That is where we're from. We're from Southern California. We do, well, we're right next to Magic Mountain, yeah, really. Yeah, absolutely. All right, go. Um, Shoot. I am Agent. Okay, so if you're a real estate agent, Mm -hmm. I love it. Thank you so much for following us and watching the show. Um, He must pay per text character. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, that's actually, I am agent. I love that. Um, That's actually pretty funny. But if you are a real estate agent, uh, you guys should be working with the very best, and Mortgage Mom Radio is the very best. So if you haven't reached out to us, please reach out to us. We'd love to help you, love love to help your clients, and um, you know, make sure we get them all educated, pre-approved for a loan, and get them in the car shopping with you. Okay, Jen... From the 416 area code. Okay. That is. All right. Uh, how much will your credit score drop if you have a 30 day late? Ooh, okay. So a 30 day late payment, if it is brand new, just happened, you know, you're you're within that first 30 days of that late payment. Everybody's credit report is different. Everybody has different credit. Everybody has different lengths of credit, different amount of accounts. So it, it, it will affect everybody just a little bit differently. If you have somebody that is, you know, an 800 credit score today and they do go late on one payment, it probably won't affect them as much as somebody that has maybe a 720 credit score. Maybe their uh, credit cards are close to being maxed out. Uh, that late payment is going to definitely affect them more than it would uh, somebody that has, you know, very low debt and just absolutely perfect stellar credit. But on average, I would say that a 30 day late, you could see uh, the points drop anywhere from about 60 to 120 points. So it, it's a pretty significant um, hit to the credit report right away. And I would definitely suggest that if there's anything that you can do to make sure that you don't get that late payment, don't do it. And if you do go late, make sure that you get it caught up as fast as possible and do not go late again. Excellent advice as always. <laughs> okay, here's one from Hawaii. Okay. I don't know why we have a bunch out of state to begin with. I love with, it. But I think it's fine. great. Um, from the 808 area code, I think okay. it's Honolulu. Yeah. Um, I am currently working with a lender. I was wondering if 4.75% interest rate is reasonable with a 10% down payment. Okay. Uh, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so um so that that's actually a very good rate that is that is right in the ballpark of where things are at today. What she didn't mention and we don't know if it's a he or she but what they didn't mention was what kind of loan that they were getting. All they said was 10% down payment. So um you know VA loan, FHA loan, conventional loan, jumbo loan, they're all going to have different interest rates. The government loans, FHA and VA will have a lower interest rate than a conventional loan. A jumbo rate a lot of times will have a little bit lower rate than a conventional loan, but a conventional loan is not going to have the mortgage insurance that an FHA would. So it is very difficult to answer that question without knowing more. Uh, I need to know what your credit score is, what goes into an interest rate, right? We've talked about this before, but um, what is really important is what does actually determine the rate that you get. So your credit score determines the rate. The property type, if you're a condominium, you're a little bit more risky than a single family home, and we can explain that in a further episode. Um, If you, you know, the the credit, your credit score that you have, your loan to value, so how much money that you are putting down, all of those things go into what determines the interest rate. So short of just knowing that she's getting a loan and putting 10% down payment is hard to say that whether, you know, that is the very best interest rate that she might be able to get her hands on. I need to know the loan type. I need to know the property type. I need to know what her credit score is. But that is a very good rate. I mean, that that is, a, that is an average, average interest rate today at four and three quarters for a purchase loan. Okay, Lexi from Eastvale. Mm-hmm. I think we answered this on the show. We actually answered show. this on, yeah, we did, but it gives her the opportunity to win her Morgan Wallen ticket, so yeah. let's do this again. I have the down payment for a home, but a lender I spoke to trying to pre-qualify stated I need two years income. Okay. I was a stay-at-home mom the, for the last four years. 
You could relate to that. I can. Sort of. You're, kind of. Sort of. I've never been a stay-at-home mom, but I am mom. Work from home. <laughs> I've worked from home when I've needed to, sure. But she worked before then since she was 16 years old, and uh-huh. she just went through a divorce. So okay. is there any way about the two-year history thing? So um, the two-year history is really just that we have to have – we have to show that you've had two years of history of employment. So at some point in time, if she's been back to work, if she was out of work for four, for four years and there was a gap of employment, she does need to be back to work and on the job for at least six months. That is the rule with FHA Um, conventional. If we can show that she actually um, had went to school for the career that she's in, even if she had that gap of employment, a lot of times we can get around um, having you know, that, that gap is not a big deal. So just depending on her situation and, you know, talking with her in person and finding out exactly what she has going on, uh, we, we would actually put together the steps that would, you know, make sense for her. But um, we, we can definitely get around that two-year rule. Okay, here's one from Bradley in Palmdale. Okay. We cover Palmdale. It's a we do. Palmdale is just a hop skip from here. Can I get a loan to do an upgrade on my house? Yes. Yes, you can. Um, So we do have renovation loans that you don't even need to really have the equity available to do the renovations. We will use the future value after the renovations are done to determine how much cash that we could give to you cash in hand. Um, There are also ways, obviously, if you've owned your home for quite some time and you've got a lot of equity, we could always look at just a standard cash out refinance. If you're a veteran, a lot of people don't know this, but the VA loans do have ways to um, do energy improvements. So you can place, you know, do double paned windows and new air conditioning systems. Can I get a solar panel? You can get solar panels. Um, honestly, um, even new uh, heating systems, the the water heaters that are the um, the tankless water heaters, those are con- considered energy efficient. So a veteran can actually buy a home and can finance on top of the price of the home all of those energy efficient improvements. So that's a pretty cool thing. Um, but we have, like I said, all the renovation financing. You can do that with a purchase or refinance. And then obviously there's just standard refinances that can be done. Are right, you want to keep going? Sure. We've got a couple more we could yeah, do here. Yeah, let's do a couple more. Okay. Let's see. Here's one from the 949. Okay. That's uh, San, San Diego. I can, 949 I can would be Orange County. Okay. Mm-hmm. Morning. How does qualify for a VA loan work when the prior primary breadwinner is not the veteran. Okay, doesn't matter. <laughs> so um, you do have to be married if you're going to have more than one person on a VA loan, but um, it, it does not matter who the primary breadwinner is. As long as you are purchasing your spouse was a veteran, you can actually take complete advantage of all of the VA, the VA benefits. So uh, it does not matter who actually makes more money. One, the veteran may be a stay-at-home mom or dad or um, disabled. It, it doesn't matter. As long as you're both on the loan, you actually get the rights to the, the VA benefits. Okay, I'm looking at some more here. There's a bunch of text messages. Tell them how to do the text thing. All right, so if you guys want to ask me questions, even after we're done streaming, please feel free. Text the word MOM to 474747, and you can ask me your questions right there. I will actually respond to you, get you answers, and if we want to, we can always touch base again after that by phone or by email. Okay, here's Jerry Okay. in Long Beach. Okay. I'm interested in refinancing in order to get rid of my PMI. Okay. That's um, pro- property management insurance. PMI would be, no, PMI is actually mortgage insurance. Ah. Uh-huh. Okay. He says, I bought the house this past July. Okay. Is it too soon to refinance? So if you just bought it in July. Uh, he has you- a 4286 Okay, well, that's kind of a weird interest rate. That might be his APR. But um, if you just bought the home in July, you may not have enough equity to do a refinance to remove your mortgage insurance. It's something that we can definitely help you with. You can give us a call. We can get the address. And we can actually look at you know comps. We'll look at comparables, other homes that have sold, to see how much equity that you may have in your property. If there is enough equity, and with a conventional loan, we don't necessarily have to have the full 20% equity. But if there is enough equity, then we can definitely... Definitely look at possibly doing that refinance to get that mortgage insurance removed. Oh, man, all these text questions. Yeah, they're good. They're good. You uh, haven't stumped me yet. I'm waiting for no, one that I, I can't got, answer. You know, there's a, so many here. I'm trying just to get rid of all the duplicates, you know. A right. lot of people are moving out of state, and they there have the are. same there's question. A lot of, yeah, there's a lot of them moving out of state, sure. Why don't, can you tell them about uh, 
102, the next course we're going to yeah, be doing? Yeah, so, so um, we're going to actually do our next course. We're going to start doing this. We're going to try to do it weekly, but we'll let you guys know when it's coming. It will always be the same thing, Sundays at 11 when, when we do do them. And um, the next course, we're going to start talking about all of the different loan programs. So FHA, VA, USDA, Jumbo, bank statement programs, no ratio loans. We're going to get into all of the different loan types in our uh, Mortgage Mom Radio Workshop, you know, Loans 102. So it, it, that, that'll be a really great one, especially if you don't understand what those different programs are and you've got all those acronyms. Uh, you know, I mentioned in the, the workshop video that you guys can go back to and watch, and it's up on YouTube as well. And that was kind of the, the important thing is that if you guys do subscribe to our channel on YouTube, then you can actually replay that workshop as many times as you want. You can stop. You can pause. You can, you know, read all of the buzzwords that I gave you earlier today. And, you know, you guys could actually probably screen capture you might even be able to print some things uh youtube's pretty cool so make sure that you find mortgage mom radio on youtube and subscribe to our channel and that way you guys can watch all of these workshops we're going to probably it will end up being i'm going to guess it's usually about a three hour uh workshop when we do them in person and three hours broken up by 15 minutes is going to be you know at at least eight you know eight to nine episodes so uh you guys are going to have a lot of very valuable information and we're going to take more time than we would in person when we're trying to you know rush through a workshop and and try to you know because we want to get you in get you out and most people can't sit for longer than three hours I know my butt starts to hurt and I feel like my crack is gone um so (laughs) um so we're, we're gonna try to get these in done in a way that you guys can take 15 minutes learn about something new let it sink in and you know then move on to the next video okay one more all right one more let's do one more um okay this one oh Melinda uh, with the 805 area code. Okay. I, I loved reading her texts. Yeah. Because she's daydreaming about houses on HGTV. I love it. And that she needs 80000 down in Santa Clarita. So she says she's looking to buy a house in Santa Clarita in January 2020. Okay. How does she get started? Well, it's really important to get started, and it's never too early to get started. So quite honestly, if she's looking in January of next year, and we're in February of this year, it's typically typically a very good idea to figure out how much do you really need. I don't know where she came up with the $80,000 figure, why that number she's been daydreaming on HGTV. I get it. I know. But, you know, $80,000 just isn't necessarily needed. Um, You know, so it's really, it's never too early to start. Honestly, Uh, she should be reaching out to us right now. We should be getting her loan application. We should be talking to her about her assets, talking to her about her income, working through with her. What can she afford on a monthly basis? What is the very best loan product and type for her? What should that sales price look like based on what the affordability is that she feels comfortable in on a monthly basis? So um, she should really be reaching out to us right now. She should be going to our website. She should be applying for the loan. Let me reach out to you, Melinda. Let me talk to you, set a consultation and work through the numbers. I really don't believe that you're going to need that $80,000 that you believe or you think that you do, and you might actually be able to be a homeowner this year and possibly even within the next couple of months. So, um, And if not, maybe she knows. Maybe she knows that she has credit repair to work on, or maybe she knows that she's got, uh, you know, she's in school, and by next year she'll have graduated and she'll have a job that's going to pay her more. But those are all things that we can work through and at least get that path, get that plan put together for her, get her on the right track, because if that is her goal is to be a homeowner by 2020 early 2020 we can get her there but the earlier she starts the better okay so if we read your text you're in the running. That's right. So we will um, we'll actually text you back if you won the Morgan Wallen tickets, or we'll send you an email mm-hmm. if you had sent us an email with your question as well. But we are going to be giving those out. Thank thank you so much to Go Country 105. They've been a huge support of our show, and um, they're always always uh, stepping in and giving us things to hand off and to give away. Last year they were really cool. They gave us stagecoach tickets to actually uh-huh. um, raffle off at one of our workshops. So we'll have to see if we could maybe twist their arm for a couple of those this year. We might win those, you and me, Deb. Yeah, we might mm-hmm. win those. Yeah. Um, Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, you guys stay tuned. Next week's going to be great. Again, subscribe to the YouTube channel so you guys can watch the uh, the live version that we did of the workshop this morning. If you want to, you can watch the video that we've already posted. And uh, we really look forward to helping you guys each and every week. We love your questions. Keep them coming. Keep texting the word mom to 474747. Uh, download my phone app. It really is the very first step for you guys towards homeownership. And it gives you every tool you could need sitting right on your cell phone. Go to my website, mortgagemomradio.com and give me a call. It's 844-WE-LEND-4-YOU. That is the number four or 
888-900-3634. And until then, stay dry. It's a very rainy Sunday. Okay, we'll welcome to the big, big grand finale. We're going to give away our tickets right now. That's right. So we uh, are picking the our favorite question of the day. And that actually comes from Melinda Davis. Melinda Davis! That's right. So um, you actually texted in with some really great questions. Your whole goal is to become a homeowner in 2020. We want to get you there. And we actually want to get you there faster. So I want to get him into Morgan Wallen. That's, That's right. Okay. We're going to get you into Morgan Wallen. You're going to go see him live in LA. And uh, we're going to be in touch with you because we're going to get you into a home and we're going to make sure that you become a homeowner. Maybe you're just not dreaming anymore. Maybe you don't have to watch HGTV all the time. Huh? How about that? <laughs> I love it. All right. Congratulations, Melinda Davis. And uh, we'll be in touch with you soon.